I, um, I feel very honored and privileged to be here, mostly because I've known Bryce for over 15 years. Yeah. So to see the support here is, it warms my heart. She's been to like some of the first shows I had when I was in a punk band yeah. in high school. <laughs> yeah, epic to see how you've grown. So um, we're gonna do some questions that I have, and then okay. we're gonna do some fan questions. So I think we'll just get into it. We're gonna go, we're gonna good. take you back. When was the first moment that you realized you had this, this musical ability about yourself? Uh, I didn't really know I had you any didn't ability. Know? No, Come I, on. Uh, well, I mean, I was 13 and I liked music. Like, I liked the way songs made me feel. I was an only child growing up and songs were kind of, so, hey, yeah, shout out. <laughs> <laughs> We get all the praise and, and all the anger. Uh, so, um, like songs were a form of therapy, you know, if I like heard something that resonated with me. So when I realized I could write my own songs, it was like my own self-therapy. So the only reason I started writing songs, I was like, all right, I gotta play an instrument. So I just chose guitar, because it seemed like the easiest thing. And um, guys pull it out at parties a lot and stuff. And <laughs> I thought that was cool. That's why you got into this? Was, yeah. yeah, that was the whole reason. Uh, yeah, I just always had a soft spot for music. What was the first song that you wrote? What was it about? First song I wrote? Uh, yeah, you said, you said you started writing and... One of them was called Good Action Movies Never Get Filmed in a Town Like This. <laughs> I was listening to a lot of Fall Out Boy. I was going to say, <laughs> that's like the longest song title ever. Uh, <laughs> Very into yeah. that. I actually I played that song on acoustic to audition to go to music school in Boston. Wait, did you so really? That, yeah. <laughs> so that song is kind of why you're here today. Yeah, let's hear Can we hear a little bit oh, of it? No, no. This is not a request hotline. <laughs> <laughs> guys are, I tried, guys. I really tried. Going crazy. <laughs> maybe, maybe the after part. I'd of be that. embarrassed to play it at this point. I bet it's good. <laughs> um, at that time when you're 13, did you ever think you could have? a career like the one that you have now? No, that was never even like, I mean, it took until pretty much like two years ago before I started believing it. You know what I mean? Like I was like, it was in the middle of happening and I'm like, you know that this might start to work yeah. out, I don't know. <laughs> um, it just, I know Aww. you do. I, I, don't know. I see you guys. didn't hear that. that it's crazy, crazy to see people singing lyrics that you wrote. It, I don't think it'll ever not be crazy. I think it's uh, one of the blessings of having it taken me so long to get to this point is that I got to really know like what it was like to not have that and then know what it's like and the difference is it's beautiful it's like it makes you, it's so much more fun to to share it with people and stuff mm -hmm. you know shit like that <laughs> um anyway yeah what'd your parents think when you started writing recording music were they supportive were they worried at all I don't really need this uh I mean, parents are always worried if, you, if there's not like a set timeline for how you're supposed to develop your lifestyle that they can follow because they want to be able to like help you along the way. And if you, these days everyone seems like, I mean, you could be an Instagrammer, you know, that's a job. It's like, there's no real set guidelines anymore like there used to be. So obviously, yeah, they were nervous, but they were always supportive, you know. They saw that I loved it and so I was willing to struggle for it, so that's all parents want to see. All right, well, let's talk about Carnival a okay. little bit. First album, I feel like we should give you an applause for that, because it's so good. It's really good, yeah. We did it together. <laughs> Thanks, guys. What did you love most about creating that album? Um, that it was mine. I, I've mm -hmm. been, yeah, I've been like, drawing little album cover sketches since I was 12 years old with little parental advisory signs and stuff like that. <laughs> you know, this is what I've always wanted. So, uh, so having it physically there, well, not physically, because everything's all mine, but um, <laughs> it's, it's unreal. It's, it's a different feeling. Like, you kind of transcend something in your own head. Mm. And well, I love all the songs. The songs are so good. Uh, you say, yeah, they're real hey. good. What do you want fans to learn about you when they listen to this in its entirety? Because you kind of take us on a, a real emotional journey. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I, th I think people relate to my music 
because they've been in a lot of the situations that I'm talking about. Um, it's not anything that, I don't know, that like the normal human experience doesn't include, you know. I, I've never sounded good trying to, and I have tried to rap about like, you know, money and guns and stuff like that. <laughs> I tried. Maybe the next <laughs> Didn't album. Didn't work for me. No. <laughs> yeah, hug life. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So it always worked out if I was like being honest in the writing and then it seemed like that's what was kind of pushing further along and now I see that it does resonate with people in that way. Yeah, I mean there are some people here that know every single song I'm looking at you yeah. on the album. Blows my mind. Yeah, very impressive. You did recently get to meet, sort of meet, pseudo meet, <laughs> Drew, Drew Barrymore. Barrymore. On the Kelly Clarkson show, yeah, very cool. <laughs> yeah, that was well, crazy. <laughs> what was that moment like for you? Uh, for people who, who haven't seen it, Kelly Clarkson has a new uh, daytime show, and I was one of the first guests on like the fourth episode, and she surprised me on her big video screen with a video of Drew Barrymore saying how much she was a fan of the song, and me and Kelly together. I know, bucket list. It was crazy. Um, and totally unexpected. She like threw me for a loop thinking that it was some review of my song before I looked at the screen. Uh, but you really had no idea? They didn't prep you? Oh no, no, they want your like real reaction, no. I didn't know that. Yeah, no. Yeah, so it was, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, she's right there and she's blown up. So I guess I haven't met her still, but. Uh, well, I have a little surprise <laughs> for you. Yeah. I'm just, I'm totally <laughs> kidding. <laughs> it would really quickly not become about me anymore. Yeah. But Drew Barrymore walking in this room. Yeah. <laughs> Thinking ahead, where do you want to see this career go? What is next for you? What goals do you still have? Uh... I mean, clearly I want to see the whole world. Uh, it's, I, I like feeling like I have a better understanding of like people and culture, and um, so I read a lot. And, uh, and I like to read about places that I haven't been so that I feel like I have some you know, comfortability when I get there. And I, I just want to be somebody that people feel like they can depend on to make songs. Like, that'll make them feel better. I think there's enough things that are tearing people apart these days, and I kind of want to be somebody that can be like a bridge between all the divides. Yeah. Are you someone who's constantly writing? Are you writing no. right now? No. 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 <laughs> Not until it's time. No. I don't, I don't have that. Like, I see, like, an eight mile, like, Eminem's, like, on the train tracks, and he's like, <laughs> see you, one of the deal, what deals? I'm like, no, I don't, I don't do that. No. I, uh, like... I'll usually just write if I'm inspired by something specific. Like, I watched this episode of Black Mirror called San Junipero, like, a year and a half so ago. Good. And then I wrote a song about that episode. I don't know why. I don't know why that was the thing that was inspiring to me, but it comes out of weird places. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to do some fan questions now. You guys sent in some really good ones. Yeah. Um, let's start with Daisy L., who says, what's your favorite show that you've ever been to? Sorry, I got loud. Oh. Um, I got to see Cage the Elephant at a festival in Europe when it was raining, all like pouring rain outside the tent, and they opened with one of my favorite songs, In One Ear. And it was, and my DJ was with me, but he, my, if he, some of the fans know my DJ, he's hurt all the time. And he had like, <laughs> obviously, he had a broken shoulder at the time, and everyone started moshing. He's like, dude, we gotta get out of here. I'm like, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was a pretty fond memory. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, okay, Emily L. says, who is the person you would most be excited to collaborate with on a song? I feel like I know this answer. You can do, take a gander. Blink. Blake? Oh, Bl Blink. Blink, oh. Uh, I was like, yeah, Blake Shelton. Yeah, Blake it. Shelton, okay. <laughs> um, I mean, Old Town Road worked, you know. Um, yeah, Blink-182 is definitely one. I don't know what I would do. I would probably more write for them. But no, uh, definitely the Kid Cudi still is a big influence. Mm. Um, Chance the Rapper, Gorillaz, um, Frank Ocean. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's a good amount of people. Okay. Yeah. You want to keep going? Kelly Clarkson on there? Yeah. Yeah. Um, while I'm racking them off. <laughs> Yeah, okay. Kelly Clarkson, yeah. 
Blue uh, face. <laughs> <laughs> we like to say blue face, baby. <laughs> um, Fleetwood A says, where do you draw inspiration from? Uh, sort of answered that already. Yeah, life experience, just trying to figure things out as I go, like I feel like everybody else is. Um, trying not to make too many mistakes that we'll regret later and try to meet good people and, and then just like I put it all into a feeling and try to capture that, I guess. Mm. Lenny T says, how did you continue to stay inspired after years of making music? I like that question. I wasn't inspired for a long time. There was like, there was a good spirit, a good period where things weren't going that well and I didn't really want to write music. I like, I don't know, I had lost the excitement over it. And when I realized that I had to like develop something new into my brain to make it exciting again, like a routine and like change my lifestyle and like go to the gym every day and then read for 20 minutes after the gym and then go to the studio and fail for like 30 days in a row. And then <laughs> the wheels started turning again and I like remembered why I wrote music in the first place and it was because it's supposed to be fun. Yeah. Yeah. And you're good at it. If you weren't making music, what do you think you would be doing? Uh, cleaning up on aisle 10. <laughs> uh, I don't believe that. I'd be a novelist, I probably. Yeah, yeah. I think I could write stories. Um, it's actually a lot easier for me because I don't have to make it rhyme. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Um, that's interesting because the next question is from Mariko F., who says, do you enjoy reading? And if so, what is your favorite book and why? Mm, uh, oh, my album just dropped. Yeah. Um, my favorite book is, there's two of them. One's called Blood Meridian by Cormac McCarthy. He wrote like The Road. Um, really depressing stuff, but it's like an amazing Western based on this gang called the Glenn Gang in... Uh, like early Americas that were sent out by the government to hunt Apache Indians, but then they started not being able to find Apache Indians because they had killed them all. Apache Indians, by the way, were some of the most brutal and like sadistic. They don't talk about the mean Native Americans in history very often. We don't like to bring that up. And they were some of the meanest and uh, so bad that the government was wanting to get rid of them. And it's about these guys that went out and did that. Um, and then the second one is a lot more lighthearted. It's called Travels by Michael Crichton, who wrote Jurassic Park. Um, and it's about his life. This guy was like 6'8", and he was a doctor, a, a brain surgeon, before he even started uh, writing successful novels. And his life is just like one epic tale after another. So. Try them out. They're really, and they relax you too. Both of those books. I know the first one doesn't sound relaxing, but <laughs> the second one for sure is relaxing. So yeah. Travels by Michael Crichton. Right. Uh, ooh. Rachel W. says, did being mixed race have a huge impact on you and your songwriting growing up? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I always felt a little out of the box. Like, I was one of the only mixed kids around when I was growing up. It wasn't like how it is now where they're, we're, we're everywhere. You can't, you can't get rid of us. But um, I didn't really have a side to connect with. Like the black kids were into a lot of stuff that I did and didn't get and the white kids were into a lot of stuff I did and didn't get. And I had really no choice but to kind of squeeze my way through, you know, both of those and try to find, I have, all kinds of friends, and I think it's for that reason that I never really felt like I belonged to any uh, group of people. Hmm. All right, this is the last one, sadly. Aw. Aw. <laughs> Wendell O. says, oh, there's two more, sorry. At what age did you know you were going to be a performer? Oh, I think, I, yeah, 13. Yeah, you said that, okay. 13, yeah. And then Yuritsa R. says, what is your favorite song? On the album. On the album? On my album? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> no, on Kelly Clarkson's <laughs> album. <laughs> yeah. uh, I have one called, oh, I just played it. Love Me, Hate Me is probably my favorite one. My, we, we talked about this hey. backstage. Yeah. yeah, it's a good one. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you guys so much for coming downtown and for Thanks, being guys. here and for supporting this guy. Appreciate it. Song Kick Live is amazing for doing this.
We gotta do more of this. More music in the world is necessary, I think. Um, make sure you guys stream the album, get the album, follow Bryce. Yeah. And thanks for having me. This was so fun. Th thanks, thanks, yeah. Katie. All right. Katie Krause.